welcome to the international broadcast ministry of No Limits. I am Pastor Delman Coates, and here at No Limits, we want to help strengthen you, encourage you, and empower you to feel God's love and to live your life without limitation. Today's message is about to begin, and I want to thank you for watching and know that I'm praying for you to hear a special word from God as you watch. This sermon comes from Genesis chapter 19. In your quiet moments, I really want to encourage you to read verses 15 through 26. Right there in Genesis chapter 19 is the focus for today's message. And I want to talk today about leaving those things in our lives or in our past that aren't good for us. How many of you can admit that you have something in your life or have had something in your life that you need to release. Somebody say release. You ever had something you need to release? Ever had someone you need to release? You ever had someone you needed to let go? That's my title, let it go. Come on, tell your neighbor, let it go. Or type in the comment section, let it go. That's what we are, that's what we're talking about today. And you know, the older I get, I'm learning from my doctors that that things that I could do in the past and things that I used to be able to eat when I was younger, I can't do it any longer. I have, I have these regular checkups and I want to make sure that my blood pressure, cholesterol, glucose, and other levels are all within range. And I'm, I'm finding out something. I, I'm finding out that in order to stay healthy now, somebody say now, I cannot do and I cannot eat the things that I once did. I used to be able to eat whatever I wanted, whenever I wanted, at whatever time of the night. But now, somebody say now. Come on, somebody say right now. Yeah, I, I can't eat the sweets that I used to be able to, to eat. I can just think about it. The other day, I went to the restaurant and uh, I asked the waiter for the dinner, for the dessert menu. He said, oh, you want desserts? I said, no, I just want to look at, look at what you have. I'm not going to order it or eat it. I just want to, that's what I have to do now. I can't eat what I used to eat. Amen. Because it'll show up on the bottom line. And so I now have to cut back. And in some other instances, I have to cut some things out altogether. If I want to be healthy, I've got to cut some stuff out, and I'm realizing that the key to having a more prosperous future, not just in my diet, but in general, is realizing that there are just some things that we cannot do any longer. You got to let it go. Yep. Yep. It's like, it's like some folks who have that receding hairline, no, no, no shade, but you know, at a certain point, you just got to let it go, bro. It's just like, cut it all off. Stop trying to hold on to it. You just got to let it go. Well, when I think about this, this struggle, I sort of, I'm sort of reminded of this story of this bald eagle that was gracefully soaring over the northwestern Pacific in search of, of food one day as it happened upon a very large salmon swimming just beneath the surface of the water. And this eagle was a skilled hunter, and so the eagle swooped down and securely placed its talons, its claws, into the back of this large fish. And the story goes that when the eagle had attached its talons into the salmon that it tried to lift up into the air, but it soon discovered that the salmon was too big for it to obtain elevation and to go higher. And with every flap of its colossal wings, they were continually hitting the water as the eagle struggled to go higher and higher and to get to the next level. Well, eventually, the eagle realized that the fish was too heavy, and the eagle decided that it wanted to detach its sharp talons from the salmon so it, it could, could go after some smaller prey. But unfortunately, its claws were so dug into the salmon that it couldn't detach its talons from the animal. And so as the eagle was frantically flapping its wings trying to fly higher, the salmon that was attached to its claws was flapping its body and was fighting back. 
And so despite wanting to fly and go higher, eventually the weight of the salmon caused the eagle to lose altitude and drug it back into the water. Are you listening to me? That eagle drowned at church because it could not separate itself from what was holding it down. And otherwise, successful fisher and otherwise expert hunter, the eagle, was tragically pulled to its death simply because it did not have the capacity to let something go. And in my life, I've discovered that there are a lot of people all around us who struggle with this eagle's dilemma. His dilemma parallels the struggle that many people face in their everyday lives. Many of us, some of you listening to me right now, find yourself in pursuit of something that you think is more attractive, pursuit of something that we feel will be more advantageous, going after something that we believe will be more prosperous only to discover that what you thought would add value to your life has suddenly taken away from your life. Y'all not talking to me here today. Only to realize that what would that what would that you thought what you thought would take you up and higher is only dragging you down and taking you lower. Now some of you are at the table with that person or you're in your bedroom with those people but just keep looking at the at the screen. And the major factor that is causing the problem and it's keeping us weighed down, burdened down, and held down is our inability to let it go. That's my title. Let it go. Come on, type a second time in the chat. Let it go. Come on, tell your neighbor. Say, neighbor, let it go. Let it go. Someone listening right now has been in a relationship that you know is toxic. No one else has to tell you about it. You know there's constant arguing. There's constant disagreements. You cannot get on one accord. It hasn't just been a week. This has been going on for years. And yet, despite the toxicity, you keep going back. Someone else is listening, dealing with some kind of addiction, a cigarettes, and alcohol, unhealthy food. The doctor has been saying you got to cut out fried foods or addicted to gambling and shopping and spending money you don't have, trying to impress people who ain't even thinking about you anyway. And this addiction is ruining your life. And despite that, you cannot give it up. Well, the key to taking off in life, God wants me to tell you, is to be found in your ability to recognize your hindrances and having the ability to let it go. And that, I think, is the real dilemma that I believe confronted Lot's wife right here in the 19th division of the first book of the Bible. Hers is a tale of someone who suffered from the inability to separate from the moments and the memories, the people and the places in her past. And as a consequence, it led to her demise. She is mentioned in the Bible only by this reference right here as Lot's wife. She, she, she isn't given a name. We don't, we don't know her background. I imagine that she did some great things in her life, but, but her legacy is only captured here by her struggle and the only identity she is given in the word of God is found by her struggle we don't know her name where she is from or who her people are but we do know that she struggled with a bad case of can't help it You've been there, yeah. Can't help it. I gotta have this. I gotta, gotta, gotta do that. She was unable to walk away from something that did not add value to her life. The tragic details of her life are captured in this scene during Sodom's destruction where the text says that the angels of the Lord instructed Lot to take his wife and his two daughters and to leave the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah without haste. In other words, don't, uh, uh, don't, don't collect your belongings, don't, get any, don't pack a bag. Uh, he, uh, the angel said, escape for your life right now. Don't delay. Uh, don't look back or stop anywhere in the valley. Escape to the hills lest you be swept away. Then the Bible says in verse 24 that the Lord rained on Sodom and Gomorrah sulfur and fire from, from the Lord out of heaven and he overthrew those cities all, all in all the valley and all of the inhabitants of the cities and what grew on the ground. Verse 26 
but Lot's wife. Lot's wife, the Bible says, looked back. And because she looked back, she turned into a pillar of salt. What a sad picture uh, of what, what very likely could have been a loving and a wonderful woman. We have no reason to think that she was a bad person, but she missed her moment, church. She missed a great opportunity at pursuing a fresh start in life and a new future, all because she could not let it go. We are told about her. I want to suggest, not so that we can make fun of her, we are told about her here, not so that we can shape our, shake our proverbial finger at her and to tell her, I told you so, but we are told about her so that we can learn from her because her struggle is our struggle. If we are honest, someone listening to me right now knows what it's like to have a future in front of you and a past behind you and you find yourself constantly glancing back, looking back at the things that are behind you. And I want to tell you that if we are to make it to the place of refuge that God has for us, if we are to make it to and through the next season of life that God has orchestrated, ordained, and arranged for us. You have got to have the power to let, let it go. Have I got a witness here? And I want to tell someone listening that there's a new city on the other side of where you are. There's a new environment. There's a new territory. There's a new place. There's a new promise. There's a new promotion. There's a new person, a new relationship, more money, another house that is on the other side is filled with peace and joy and happiness and pleasure. It's stress-free. It's not going to give you any drama. You ain't going to have to worry about where they are because they're going to have the sense to come home or to be where they told you they're going to be. It's going to be stress-free. But if you are going to possess it, if you are going to experience it, if you are going to realize it, you're going to have to have the capacity to leave the things that are unhealthy, unpleasurable, that are painful and toxic so that you can walk in your God-given purpose and future. Somebody shout, let it go. Let it go, let it go, let it go. I've learned, I've learned in life that one of the best things you can do sometimes is to cut some stuff off. Yeah, yeah, sometimes by, by trying to hold on to things and by trying to hold on to people and by trying to hold on to certain ideas, uh, wondering why it didn't work out and uh, you can end up making things worse rather than better. Somebody listening, you've been holding on some, to some stuff. Uh, uh, try, try, you've been holding on to a memory and a moment. You have been replaying that same tape over in your mind, uh, trying to figure out where you went wrong and where, where they went wrong and where y'all went wrong. Uh, and as a consequence, you are not walking uh, into uh, your future. And that kind of thing, uh, it can breed resentment and bitterness if you're not careful. That, that kind of thing can breed self-pity. It can cause you to blame other people, to blame yourself, to blame God, and in the end, it can block you from your blessing. But God sent me on assignment today to tell someone, don't you let a person, a situation, a problem in your past block your blessing, holding on to things and to people that have lasted past their expiration date. Someone listening, someone listening, uh, you got to treat some stuff like milk that has expired. Uh, you need to look on the label, uh, and if the expiration date has passed, uh, you need to throw it away and get some more. Somebody, that's your word. I need to throw it away and get some. God wanted me to tell somebody uh, that it's time to throw some things away uh, and get some more. It's time to throw some old habits away uh, and get some new habits. Uh, time to throw some old associates away and get some new partners. Time to throw some old relationships away and get some more. Come on, somebody type in the comment section. I'm going to get some more. Yeah, get some more, get some more. Now here, I know you're listening. You're saying, preacher, it's easy to say all of that. But 
Letting go is not easy. I, I know that's why you're looking at me with that tone of voice. You're saying, preacher, I, it's easy to preach about releasing some stuff, but uh, you don't know how long they've been around. You don't know how long I've been in this. And so I understand that letting go is not easy. But I do want to tell you that letting go becomes possible when you understand why it's so necessary. And that's what I want someone to really grasp out of today's message. See, the reason Lot's wife and her family were in this situation in the first place, that is, having to flee Sodom and Gomorrah, get this, is because their existing reality was destined for destruction. I need y'all to get this. You can, you can rewind a few chapters uh, before and, and earlier. God had already decreed that the cities were going to be destroyed. So where they were, their present reality was already destined for destruction. The handwriting was already on the wall for Sodom and Gomorrah. God had already decided to destroy the cities. It did not matter that Sodom and Gomorrah had great potential. I need y'all to listen. Oh, we have so much great potential. Yeah, she got so much great potential. Like, if we can work this and work that, and, and I, can, I can make her into what I need. He got so much potential. Look, Sodom and Gomorrah had so much potential, but all of that did not matter. All of that was gone now. They were no longer capable of fulfilling, fulfilling their potential. They were no longer being the bastions of hope and peace and equity. God wanted those cities to be and it was time to cut ties with those cities. It was time. Somebody say it was time. I can't hear you. Somebody say it was time for them to let go of their losses and to let it go. Sometimes, church, we are holding on to things that God has already declared are over. Y'all not talking. Sometimes we keep people around that we know in our spirit are not in line with God's will for our lives. We say, well, let me try to call them again. Let us have one more meeting and one more conversation. Uh, maybe if we get them, can get them to talk to them. No, no, we know it in our spirit that, that we have come to the end of the road, but yet we keep people around when God has already spoken to our spirit that it's time to let it go. Y'all not here. I suspect that Lot's wife struggled <coughs> walking away because of familiarity. Yeah, see, <clears throat> the reason she struggled going forward is because she was familiar with that city back there and her familiarity made it more difficult for her to walk away. I'm trying to help someone here today. And I think that's why we stay too long. That, that, that's why I think we stay in situations too long. I think that's why we keep looking back because we are so familiar with things that, that aren't good for us. Look there in verse 13. I believe verse 13 says that the angel of the Lord described the cities as their playing field which means that they were intimately familiar with the territory where they were. Even though everything behind her was bad, she was fixated on it because she had invested a lot of time there. Yeah, she had a home there with furniture that she had bought and purchased. She had photo albums back there. She had friends back there. She had memories back there. And because of the investment of time and energy, I'm trying to help someone who was stuck on a a person back there. Uh, you bought them a robe. Uh, you bought them flowers. Uh, and because of your investment of time and energy and money, uh, it can make moving on very difficult. And the prospect of change can be more daunting than promising. Uh, sometimes people conclude uh, that the devil they know is better than the devil they don't know. They conclude uh, that the issues they got with this one uh, is better than the is is better than the issues they don't know uh, with the next one. And since moving forward uh, will require you to learn new methods, new ways, and new techniques. We choose to stay in places uh, and with people that are familiar to us because uh, we are afraid to go out there into a new world uh, that God has ordained and assigned for us. Y'all not talking to me here today. Fear keeps us trapped 
because we're afraid to embark on a new world where we would have to learn about stuff that didn't exist 25 years ago when we met the person before there was online dating and social media. It's too daunting. So we just stay with the people that are familiar with us. And it was that mindset. It was that familiarity with Sodom and Gomorrah that caused Lot's wife to look back. And yet, despite the investment she made, despite the experiences she had, and despite the familiarity she had with the city, God says it's over. God had decreed that he was going to destroy the city where they were, and there was nothing she could do about it. Church, when you realize that where you are is about to implode and fall on you, when you realize that the situation that you are in is crumbling and is about to lead to your demise, that is when you will come to your senses and let it go. And the reason you need to walk away, church, is because where you are going, glory to God, this is where God went, where you are going is even greater than where you have been. I want to tell someone listening that God has greater for you. God has greatness ordained for you in your future. And the reason you need to walk away from some stuff is because it is hindering you from greater. It is hindering you from getting to your next opportunity. See, God had prepared a place for them. It's called the city of Zoar. It's right there in the text. It was a city that was southeast of the the Dead Sea where Lot and his family were headed. Zoar was the ordained place. Somebody say ordained place. Zoar was the place that God had orchestrated and designed for them before they were even born. Zoar was uniquely positioned and arranged to be the place that God would provide as a, as a refuge for them. God had ordained a place that was greater than where they were. So child of God, don't you let people make you think that you can't leave them, um, that your life won't be any good if you walk away. Play the places, uh, don't let people think and don't consume that places in your past uh, can cause you to keep, keep you uh, from walking into your future. Let you never forget that whatever God requires us to leave, uh, pales in comparison to what God has prepared up ahead. Did y'all hear me? What God, had, the relationship uh, that you leave uh, pales in comparison uh, to the relationship that God has prepared up ahead. The job you walk away from, uh, the situation you walk away from, uh, if it's, it is ordained by God, pales uh, in comparison uh, to what God's got up ahead. Glory to God. This is in part why the angels tells them, don't look back. That's why the angel said, don't spend when you get out, when y'all leave Sodom and Gomorrah, don't look back, don't hesitate, don't stop along the way, don't spend your don't stop in the valley, because where you going is gonna be qualitatively greater than where you have been. Have I got a witness here? One simply cannot go forward continuing to look in the rearview mirror. It is why your windshield is greater than your rear rear view mirror. You're just supposed to glance there. You ain't supposed to stay stuck there. You're going to have an accident. You're going to cause problems for yourself and other people if you get stuck and fixated on what is behind you. But God sent me on assignment to talk to 300 people listening to me right now who can shout and thank God that where I'm going is greater than where I'm being. Have I got a witness here? And you need to walk forward with your eyes fixed on what ahead of you. Uh, sometimes uh, the best thing you can do is keep moving forward. Sometimes the best thing you can do is take a big leap of faith without hesitation, without reservation, and without looking back. Simply forget the past and reach forward to what is up ahead. Have I got a witness here? 
someone listening. You've been debating some major issue, debating uh, some major decision or some major dilemma. It comes from the fact that you are stuck on the experiences you had. But God says, don't let your experiences from the path, past hold you hostage. God's got something greater up ahead. God has got something greater for you right around the corner. And you may not be able to see it. And you may not be able to touch it. But if you have faith in God, God wants me to tell you that greater is calling you. Come on, type in the comment section, greater is calling me. Come on, pat yourself on the chest. Come on, come on. Pat yourself on the chest and say, greater is calling me. Yeah, God's got something great. And I can prove it in the text. The text says right there in verse 17, the angels told them when you leave this city, I want you to escape to the hills. It's right there in verse 17. I want to tell you that the hills are a metaphor for that which is elevated. The hills are a metaphor for that which is high and lifted up. Y'all not here. See, where they were was in the valley. Where they were was in a low elevation. And if they wanted to avoid doom, they had to look to the hills and get to the hills so that they can make it to higher ground. Anything that's low, you ought to walk away from. Anything that's low, low self-esteem, low down people, low energy activities, God says you got to get out of the valley and get to the hills. Have I got a witness that somebody listening uh, needs to testify it's time uh, for me to go higher <laughs> have I got a witness there is time uh, for me to raise my consciousness uh, it's time for me to go higher uh, in worship higher in praise uh, higher and is there anybody listening uh, who can testify that it's time to go higher you gotta separate so you can go higher and when I think about how separation can actually be a pathway to something better, it causes me to think about how babies are weaned from their mother after breastfeeding for quite some time. Leaving, releasing is a pathway to something better, something greater. It's, th this baby has been getting milk from its mother day after day, week after week after week, month after month. But, but, but one day, it, it, it becomes clear that, that the baby needs some deeper sub sustenance. It, it needs something more substantive so that it can go to its next level. And so the mother has to do something that might be difficult for the baby. It has to, mother has to wean the baby from the milk so that the baby can start eating whole foods. Y'all not here. The baby now needs vegetables. The baby now needs fruit. And, 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 and the separation process can be hard, and perhaps it can be painful, but none of us today, somebody say today, none of us today would go back to only drinking milk now, now that we have dined on something greater. God has something greater with your name on it. Have I got a witness here? And you cannot go back uh, to the way things were, to the way things that used to be, because uh, God has uh, something greater. But someone's listening and you're saying, preacher, how do I do it? How? how? I hear what you're saying and I understand why I need to do it. <laughs> I understand that my present situation is headed for doom and destruction, but my dilemma is with how, 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 how do I do it? How, how do I give up the addiction? How do I give up the associations that I've had? How, and sometimes that's the greatest. How, how do I move forward without looking back? Well, I believe this passage implies, gives us a tip, some keys on, on what you and I need to do if we're going to release some stuff. And I believe this text implies that if you want to release some stuff, 
You're going to have to cultivate your relationship with God. You got to let go of this, but you got to get closer to that. Yeah. You got to let go here, but you got to draw closer to God over here. I, I want to prove my point. If you're going to move forward, you got to cultivate your relationship with God. See, what stands out to me about this text is that in this entire episode in Lot's life, and that of his family. They never seem to do any of the essential things that his uncle Abraham, the father of faith, did throughout his journey with God. You go back to chapter 12. We've been walking uh, and we've been looking at Abraham, his Lot's uncle. We have been looking at his journey. And at every juncture in the last seven chapters or so, whenever Abraham would move, and whenever Abraham would encounter a challenge and whenever Abraham would encounter a dilemma or an obstacle, Abraham would build an altar. <laughs> Every time Abraham encountered an enemy or a dilemma, Abraham would consult the Lord. He'd build an altar or he'd consult the Lord. Y'all here. He would worship God or he'd pray to God. I need y'all to get this here. But Lot... But Lot, somebody say, but Lot. <laughs> Lot, who is a beneficiary of his family's wealth. Yeah, a uh, lot. He, he, he was the recipient of, uh, of the legacy and the heritage of the people before him. He is the heir. He is the great, great the grandchild of terror. He is, he, is, he is the heir and the legatee of, of wealth and position and status. Lot seems oblivious to the need to prioritize God and to honor God. I need y'all to get this here. Lot, yeah, he's living, how in, living in houses that his grandfather could never have. He's riding, ca driving cars that his grandfather could never drive. I mean, he's living lot. He's shopping in places. He's dining in restaurants that his ancestors had never dined in before. And what stands out to me, church, is that this blessed brother who, who's trying to now save his daughters and his wife, he, this blessed brother who needs to be an example for his family. Nowhere in the Genesis narrative do we see or hear of Lot doing anything to demonstrate his commitment to worship. Nowhere. Somebody say nowhere. Nowhere. Nowhere does he follow the example of his uncle Abraham, which suggests that, that Lot is trying to ride the spiritual coattails of his uncle. I need y'all to get this here. Lot is trying to get to the next level by riding on the prayers, by relying on the relationship that Abraham has. Y'all not here. Yeah, he's trying to get to the next level. He, he was trying to be blessed, but he's trying to do so without nurturing his own relationship with God. His relationship, God, is derivative and it is not organic. He goes to church because Abraham took him to church. He prayed. He heard about prayer. And so he is trying to walk into his promise based upon the derivative prayers and prayers and worship of his uncle. And at a certain point, church, you have got to get God for yourself. I'm trying to talk to somebody here. Look, I thank God for the example of my parents. I thank God that Lewis and Maxine kept my sister and I in church. I thank God that they kept us in Sunday school. They made sure that if you go out on Saturday, you're going to be in church on Saturday. I thank God for a praying mama. I thank God for a praying father. But at a certain point, I realized that I had to get God myself. And I want to talk to someone listening. And I want to tell you that the reason you're having the trouble that you're having, the reason you're having the challenge that you're having is because you are relying on your grandmother's prayer. You're relying on your mama's relationship. And I want to tell you that if you're going to get to the next level, you can't have derivative worship. You got to have your own worship. Come on here. You can't have derivative praise. You got to 
not have your own a relationship with God. Have I got a witness here? Mama may have. And Papa may have. But God blessed the child. That's got his own. You got to get your own. You got to get your own. You got to get your own. Uh, you're going to have to get your own favorite scripture. And the reason that's key, church, is because uh, if you're going to move ahead, then you need to be clear about what God has told you to do. Are y'all listening to me here? You read the story for yourself. In the opening verse of chapter 19, Lot received a clear and explicit instructions. He received clear and explicit news about what God was going to do in Sodom and Gomorrah. He was careful to apprise his wife and the other family of the details regarding the destruction of the city in verses 12 through 14. There is no way possible for Lot's wife to have been unclear about what the outcome was going to be. Are y'all listening? And I want to suggest to you today, when I examine this text, I want to tell you that you know why I think she looked back? I think she looked back also because she didn't take God's word seriously. See, in verse 16, the Bible says that when Lot lingered, that the angels grabbed Lot, his daughters, and his wife by the hand. Somebody say, by the hand, yeah. Come on, say by the hand, by the hand, yeah. The Bible says the angels of the Lord grabbed them by the hand and was walking them out of the city. And for some reason, it seems that Lot's wife was able to look back because she let go of the angel's hand. She let go of the hands of the angel of God just long enough to get a glimpse of what was behind her. And because she let go of the hands of the angel of God, it cost her gravely. You cannot afford, child of God, to let go of the hand of God. You cannot afford, if you're moving forward, to let go of the hand of God. That's why we say hold to his hand. God's unchanging hand because you got to build your hopes on things that are eternal. You got to hold to God's unchanging hand. Have I got a witness here? Come on, is somebody listening who can thank God and who can testify that you are where you are, that you, you have what you have because you held the hand of God. Have I got a witness here? Is there anybody listening who can testify that you got your peace, you got your promotion, and you got your property because you held the hand of God? Have I got a witness here? You got to let go, but you got to hold on. Let go of the word world, but hold to his hand. God's unchanging hand. Good day, church. May the Lord bless you real good. But I stopped by to tell somebody, let it go. Let it go. And don't look back because all things are working together for your good. Have I got a witness? The Bible says that because she looked back, she turned to a pillar of salt. She became hard and callous because she looked back and God sent me to tell somebody, don't look back. God has something greater for you. Come on, put your hands together and give God some praise. Come on, put your hands together and give him praise. Yeah, don't look back. Because where you're going is greater than where you've been. God wanted me to tell someone listening that greater is up ahead. Let all of that go. Let the past go. Let the shame go. Let the hurt go. God's got something ahead of you then that's greater 
than where you have been. Come on, put your hands together and give the Lord some praise today. After our first year of broadcasting weekly messages here on No Limits, it is clear that the most popular way to watch the program is through our free mobile app. If you already have the free No Limits mobile app, thank you for downloading. And I hope this app helps you each day in your walk with the Lord. And if you do not have the app, what are you waiting for? You can download this app for free right now from the App Store on either your Apple or Android device. This app contains the weekly message I preach, as well as free resources like a daily devotion and a Bible that contains a free reading plan. Before I go, let me ask you for a favor. Please tell all of your friends about the No Limits mobile app as we want to connect with more people and help them live a life with no limits. Learn more at delmancoats.org. That's delmancoats.org. Thank you for watching the message today, and I look forward to seeing you again right here next week for another episode of No Limits. Join me as we travel to Egypt and Dubai in the spring of 2023. Together, we will explore the Great Pyramids of Giza and learn the hidden history of one of the world's greatest ancient civilizations. We will cruise the ancient Nile like the pharaohs once did and disembark at iconic sites such as the Aswan Islands, the Valley of the Kings, and the famous Egyptian Museum of Antiquities. And after we've explored Egypt, we will head to Dubai and explore this great modern city. This is truly the trip of a lifetime, and I hope that you'll join me on this journey. Go to delmancoats.org for more information and to register. But don't delay, as space is limited on this tour. I want to thank you for watching today, and I'll see you right here next week for a new episode of No Limits. I am so glad that you took the time to watch this message today. If you have been blessed by this outreach, I'd like to ask you to become a partner in this ministry so that together we can reach the world for Jesus Christ. My heart is to reach people just like you all around the world and to tell them that God loves them and wants to empower them to live a life with no limits. Your financial investment in this ministry will enable us to spread the good news of Jesus Christ around the world so that more people can be inspired and encouraged. Will you help me to reach those people? Will you join me in empowering the lost and the forgotten? Will you be my partner as we teach people to truly live a life with no limits? To make a donation safely and securely, go to our website at delmancoats.org. That's delmancoats.org and look for the donate button on the top right of the homepage. Thank you in advance for your support and for becoming a true partner in No Limits. Your partnership and financial gift will help us impact the world by bringing hope to those who need it. Your generosity today is a reminder of the goodness of God. Thank you again for watching No Limits with Pastor Delman. The preceding program was brought to you by the faithful supporters of No Limits and Mount Enon Baptist Church in Clinton, Maryland.